No, I'm not the way of honor. Does it make a second maybe, for that? You make it for that? Yeah, the Japanese were Today in Japan? Actually, mm -hmm. the, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Are you all good to go? I'm already filming. Oh, you're already filming. <laughs> I am. Let's go over this all in. All right, officially sorry. Hi, uh, uh, we're here with uh, Hiroaki Yuro, the uh, founder of uh, Eminent Symphony Orchestra and uh, Creative Interactive Arts. Is that intelligence? Intelligence. Damn it. Who tracks for you? Huh? Maybe I should make a company for each other. <laughs> uh, branch off. A third one. Why not? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to have the acronym CIA. I, <laughs> I, I noticed that it was that. Yeah, because um, this dude I know had FBI. Oh, yeah. And he was like four bars of entertainment. So, okay. So you're always a bit better than FBI, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, it actually works. Yeah. Officially, fully works. Um, so, yeah, I was going to uh, start with um, you started the, uh, the orchestra first, and then. Um, Eventually, uh, like as it went on, you uh, you've done concerts mm -hmm. featuring uh, the songs from the anime and games, but also actually done the uh, official music for the games. Recording. Recording. Sorry for yeah. the actual soundtrack. I was gonna say. Um, I done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, what the uh, what the difference you felt in recording between having pieces that were already prearranged and then. Your orchestra playing them as opposed to coming up with the actual songs for games? Well, technically, we don't come up with the songs. Okay. Uh, the composers do that. And they bring it up and say, hey, let's record this. There you go. Now, um, performance and recording is a bit different. Um, performance. Well, performance is in kind of hard in a way that you can't edit it later or you can't get a rubber. Just rub it off. It doesn't happen. <laughs> Once you play it wrong, not your screw. Everybody, especially everybody notices. Like the Escaflone that we did in 2005. Uh, do you know Escaflone? It's a yeah, yeah, very, old, sure, sure. very old. Very old. Very old. It's like it goes like it's it's like a choir and orchestra. It's like Escaflone. Esca. Right? And somebody, one dude, came in like a beat early. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's performance. Recording, um, what's bad about recording is uh, um, we have pimos. So these mics are right up to, to instrument. They're basically worse than they could. So, you know. They've got a microscopic scopic view view of a view gun. Uh, they know that everything that you've done so far, all your screw ups, all your lives is oh, wow. really it's, it just feels like that because anything any, any little mistake you make, somebody's gonna hear it. And there's no hiding from it. Whereas if it's a performance, unless it's a big mistake, nobody notices. So you make little many little mistakes. But the little mistakes matter in actual recordings. However, you can edit it. <laughs> you can have another go. <laughs> but that's a good thing about it. Yeah. That's the difference. Well, with the, uh, the final product, like the process being different, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the difference between the orchestra is that I'm not, I'm not sure like, which is more difficult, but having a, uh, like an immediate response from an audience versus having like, an edit in the recording for the audience. Um, you said that. Uh, it's microscopic focusing on it, it's for the end as well. Um, but in, in the moment, is it feel more so from that or having all of the eyes looking at you instead of doing something similar? If you're a pro, you get to learn how to ignore all the eyes, the eyeballs, the objects <laughs> staring at you. And you don't have to worry about your ego because you've got this. You've seen Evangelion, right? You've got this AT field around you, so nobody can come in because you're pro, you know how to defend yourself. If you're not, you're <laughs> pretty bad. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, in terms of recording, you don't want to be the one fucking guy. Like, you, you don't want to be that guy that didn't allow them to all leave at 5 p.m. <laughs> because you have to do it again. Um, 
I mean, there's different kinds of pressure. Of course, we we feel you know performance pressure on stage as well. But um, well, uh, having had uh, so much experience in that field, in that part of the industry, in both recording and live uh, coverage, um, the the your second company, the CIA, you're uh, working on your mm. funding projects. Um, what was it that let made me, you? Let me just uh, clarify. Okay. CIA is not really a funding company, nor is it mm, yes. technically a uh, video game developer. CIA was initially made to cater for Banner Number Games request to have a Japanese entity made so that we can do business um, for uh, primarily SoCal 5, which I was an audio or sound director, uh, music director for. So um, they, they didn't want to deal with an Australian company, other different boards. Okay. So, um, but then you evolved into you know doing stuff. Yes. Well, it's a remote. Uh, yeah, with the, uh, the latest project, the, the Phoenix, which um, mm -hmm. from the thing you're credited as a producer and, and director, um, it was what like in yourself led you to want to like work as like a different position or like, in like the, the uh, in, was, was in the initial phase. It's my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> I take no responsibility. Um, all I did was I, you know, I worked on. Diablo 3, so I have friends from Blizzard as well. All I did was, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we had like Warcraft but more RPG, JRPG? And people were going, yeah, that's too bad. Hero, you be the director and the producer because you can speak both languages. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm busy. And they're like, well, who else is going to do it? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. It's just too much work. But they kept on, they kept on at it until I just up and said, okay, um, if you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but was that the, I assume, the initial uh, idea to, to fund the game through Kickstarter? It wasn't so much as want, wanting to fund the game. It was more about wanting to make the game. And then I thought, hey, it could be fun. And then we started funding the game. So it was more initially we want to make this game um, and I was doodling stories and crap. And I was getting people to join a team and then I oh hang hang on, we should fund this. So we went, okay, we want to put the other box so that we can make our box. And then we got a win. So. I mean, and from the uh, I guess press for the game. It's listing it as the first uh, video that kickstarted or funded video game from Japan. Um, with that, and having said that CIA was known as originally created as like a Japanese branch, um, how is the crowdfunding process viewed from that side of the industry? It's, it's become fairly prevalent over on the western side of mm -hmm. things, but there's not a lot of news of it. Kickstarter projects well, not recently. There's many now. Um, you know, there's Monkey Number Nine by KG Nakanisa, yeah. Bloodborne by the Castlevania dude. Um, you know, she, don't quote me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I think I'm friends with him on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh, Red Ash that KG did again. Um, and then there was this horror game by Horn Kikumisa. Um, Scissors, uh, where scissors chase you, cut you off. Mm -hmm. apart, like apart from funding the game, mm -hmm. what do you think the benefits of Kickstarter rather than normal, you know, game development process is? Oh, well, it just depends who your boss is. Yeah. So when you get funded by Kickstarter, your boss is your backers. When you get funded by a publishing company, your boss is some dude from the publish team company, <laughs> right? Fair enough. And they say different things. Usually the boss from the publishing company goes, make us more money. Yeah. Or like, let's have, let's make these players pay more so that they can get stronger so we make more money. Mm -hmm. Or be like, oh, we should sell them big spacecrafts and bigger the spacecraft, the more money you have to pay. So there's a bit more demands from the publisher rather than 
the backers you're saying? Or? Yeah, whilst we want to make a nice game, and so does the backers, so I was like, why don't we get the backers to help? However, the problem with the backers is they're not professionals. They know about games, they love video games, but they don't know how to make a game. But the publisher knows, understands that. You know, if they, if they think if they do this, the game will be made, they will do this. Whereas backers won't do that. Because they don't, they don't know what this is. Is it uh, also, I would imagine that it changes things because as a, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say petty, but as it sounds, when someone invests whatever amount of their own money into it, they, uh, I guess, comparatively believe they have more and more of an opinion towards it. Right. So does that put, like, I guess, a sense of extra pressure on because they're involved not only in the purchase, but also to a degree in the, in the pre-release of the game? Right. Well, I, I think it doesn't matter if you give five bucks or ten thousand dollars. It's you're still a backer. And it, it doesn't matter how much you're getting or how little you're getting. Uh, your the opinions of the backers matter, and that's just the end of it. You know, um, if your ten thousand dollar backer says, "Hey, I want the game mechanic to be like this," and you know, five bucks. Guy goes, hey, but that's stupid, and you know whatever they're doing is right. Then I'll just stick to whatever is right. <laughs> like it's, you know, one dude's not gonna make. If everybody says, hey, hero, green's red, I'll go, <laughs> okay, green's red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. It's I don't think it's a amount you back. The amount you back, you get more rewards. That's the reward. But it's more about you know. Um, how to make everybody, how to make the game better. Um, uh, talking about that, uh, making the game better, and, and you mentioned before having friends from uh, when you worked on Diablo. Um, the, the team making this game is pretty you know, uh, skilled and they're from different areas and different countries. And everything. Was that, you said, an original one because you knew the people first and you all came up with the idea for a game? Or did the game come first and then you decided to reach out to these people to build it? Well, a bit of both. Yeah. I had a half dozen people to begin with, and then I picked up people on the way, and some people flicked out, and some people I fired, and yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Um, because a game's living thing, and so, so are people, and our minds change. So does the game's mind change. Um, if I feel the game wasn't suited for a particular creator. Um, I just asked them to play me. If somebody who isn't involved with the project but is perfect, I'll ask them to join us. Um, with the actual uh, production of the game, um, is attention it attendees. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Guardian Ilya CD signing uh, is three to four p.m. Well, today well, has well, been cancelled. Your signing token is valid for the signing session on Sunday. For more information, please visit, visit the Annie Song booth. Again, unfortunately, the Gynadelia CD signing for 3 to 4 p.m. today has been cancelled. Uh, your signing token is valid for the signing session on Sunday. For more information, please visit the Annie Song booth. Okay. Alright, <laughs> right. intermission over. Um, the, the team itself, are they still like spread out is that uh, how's that impact the actual production having like different uh, I guess time zones and schedules we don't get to see their pretty faces every day but we do have Skype uh. <laughs> um, well those th those teams are compartmentalized so like for example the model team modeling team is all from Berlin so uh, the most important thing is um, the leader of each unit produce X amount of whatever by when. And if they meet that deadline, then that's, that's good. And then we'll put it together and we'll test it. And uh, if it's bad, then we'll ask them to redo the take or edit or whatever and get them to resubmit. It's not, it's not that hard um, because most of the gameplay is from me. Um, and, you know, I'm responsible for testing and directing. So, yeah. As long as you're very old. Um, how, how does all that 
I, I suppose compare before having worked in um, just the bass was the one aspect having a recording and, and doing the music. Um, how does that compare to having to also now for this game keep an eye on all the different segments and the backers and the, I guess organize the meetings like you know, all that? It's kind of like the same except bigger. It's like you're like the Prime Minister of, or oh sorry, you're like the Minister of Agricultural Affairs and now you're the Prime Minister. You're technically doing things the same, except you've got more people to work for. But you have to manage more, I guess. Um, and you have more responsibility, but... It's the same but bigger, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, definitely, fair enough. Um, so, obviously, um, the, uh, the original inception of the, of the game is um, you know, inter interested you and enough people to, to come to work on to it. Um, I'm curious about the, uh, like you said, the, it's talked about the backers having their input and all the different people having their input. Um, I do feel surprised by how much it's it's come to not even just progress, but like alter or evolve as more people or um, even the quality of. We haven't finished our alpha, so uh, we haven't given the backers a fair chance to look at the game uh, until we finish the alpha. Um, well, comments are invalid really because we haven't done what we basically want to do. Basically. I mean, we've done the visuals, which is kind of, um, you'll see so uh, sort of a vertical cut, but that's only the visual response. You know? We're still testing the visuals as well. But um, the most important thing is like the gameplay and the story, and that's nowhere, we haven't even started. So it's still, uh, still a while to go, like, still production has progressed, but there's still a fair amount. Shit time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot left to go. Right. Yeah, do I, do, I do have one question. Yesterday at the press conference, you mentioned that the 10th anniversary had passed for your orchestra, and you wanted to do a uh, performance concert soon, mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned that you wanted to get the, I believe, composer of Final Fantasy on. I didn't catch we the must. name. Um, what's, your, what's your connection to him? Um, just a dude. You, you just know him? <laughs> I just know him. Just, just a friend, is he? Well, he's, he came to our first concert in 2004. Oh, really? Okay. Who have known him for 10 years. Yeah. So, and he's working on Phoenix as well. Right. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And um, you've worked with him previously at all or on, on anything else? Or is this the first just, time? No, no, 2000. Well, him coming to a concert, I don't, I'm not sure if you can classify as working with him. Yeah, so that's that's do, then we have. Yeah. Okay. And he's, he's given us jobs to do, like arrange music or orchestrate his music. Cool. Alright, well, so uh, have you made any more plans towards the 10th anniversary or now 11th? Since yesterday. <laughs> since yesterday? <laughs> what we need is a bit of money to rehearse or orchestra perform. Um, I think the biggest draw card is uh, Sakaguchi-san, who's the creator of Final Fantasy. He likes surfing, so and his daughter goes to a university close to here. Okay. So why not? <laughs> cool. There you go. Sounds good. Good. Yeah. I uh, maybe since we've been talking about the game for a while, we can go and check yeah, out. Yeah, let's go check out the game and we'll capture some of that.